Uh, hi, I'm Kelly Zwerch, CEO and co-founder of Aerolab Tech. And I'm Chris Morton, also a co-founder of Aerolab Tech. Go slow! <laughs> Action! Action! <laughs> What we're planning to do is run a series of videos here to educate you on the sensor, how we're doing things, how to successfully run tests, and just all the dynamics that we've experienced over the last couple of years as we've developed this technology for the world. We're gonna go through anything from talking about the engineering behind the sensor, as well as the practical application of how you use this as a coach or a fitter, or what's your experience as an athlete? This video today, what we're going to do is we're going to actually talk more about how the sensor works and some of the things that we like to use when we're doing tests. The sensor, um, this what, what's in front of me right here, has a lot of internal sensors in it that allow you to measure um, a variety of important key information. In the end, it connects to your power meter and speed sensor if required, and then it computes in real time your aerodynamic characteristics, drag as well as rolling resistance. So um, the key factors in the sensor is it's measuring how much input power you're applying to the pedals, and based on that input power or input energy, it needs to back out how much energy is going into the drag or the resistance of the wind, and how much energy is going into the resistance of the road or the rolling resistance. And just over the last couple of years as we've developed this, this, this system's actually engineering and lab grade technology, and we've tested incredible people. We've everything from uh, athletes at the US Olympic team where we were actually down to dealing with simply the uh, drag related to booties. We've done a ton of stuff with uh, glasses, helmets, yep. during our test process. So I've, uh, I've even shaved my legs to uh, see what kind of aerodynamic gains I can, I can get. And trust me, that was interesting to say the least. But that was a good example is how accurate we were able to get with, uh, with the sensor. So that was our end goal and uh, we've successfully achieved that. Yeah. Um, why don't we talk about some of the sensors then? Why, why we're picking certain power meters? We're not by any means biased to the power meters. What it is, uh, so if you're using a single-sided, that type of thing, it's, it's great for you for, for training and so forth. But some of the power meters uh, Chris is going to talk about that we like uh, just because of their accuracy and uh, drivetrain loss. Yeah, and a lot of this information can be found um, on our website in regards to the performance of different power meters. Um, I wrote a, a blog article on it uh, just recently on, on um, all the different power meters and all their different slight variations. So without a doubt, one of the most important things is if you plan on doing arrow, arrow testing with a sensor like this, uh, stick with the same power meter throughout those tests. Don't try not to switch out to a different power meters. Um, we prefer dual-sided power meters, ones that enable you to measure uh, imbalances uh, between left and right, or using a hub-based power system or crank, crank spider-based power system. So some examples of those are in front of us here. As you may have seen sensor technology that's quite similar and on the market from other manufacturers. So what's unique about ours is that our internal sensors measure something called the wind vector. So they have internal pressure sensors, multiple, that measure the angle of the wind that's coming in at the bike, as well as the magnitude of the wind. I guess everybody in the industry knows it as yaw, so he's just talking engineering talk. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the easiest way to say it is when you experience a crosswind or a yaw, we're accounting for that crosswind in the calculations, which is really difficult to do, and uh, it speaks to sort of the, the engineering quality we put into our sensors. Each of these sensors are wind tunnel calibrated for yaw as well as airspeed. And then beyond that, we um, also uh, calibrate them under different environmental conditions and test them under a variety of scenarios. Yeah, and, and to that point, like we are using automotive grade, lab grade sensors. So if you're used to seeing uh, like a GPS, you know, we know that you can order it from a place for five, ten dollars. The fact is our GPS is substantially uh, up there in price comparison. So we definitely aren't a, uh, a low budget sensor system. Certainly not. I'm, I think that the uh, key, key takeaway is that um, it, we, we minimize the challenges associated with doing aero sensor measurements in the field when you're doing it with, um, with your team or with your, your athletes that you're working with. 
And um, in doing so, that requires some high quality sensors. And we haven't sacrificed anything with this sensor. Every single sensor was carefully selected to ensure the, the highest possible quality imaginable lab, laboratory grade. So uh, we have manufacturers using the technology. We have um, professional athletes using the technology. We're coming from the top down. Yeah, and good point. So diving a f into a few more sensors that uh, we like to use, speed cadence sensor, uh, Chris mentioned, isn't needed, but what it does is just increases the resolution if you're in an area where, say, you're losing GPS signal and so forth, which can yeah. happen when you're out there in the road enjoying ride time. Uh, another sensor that we've grown to really appreciate is the tire whiz. And the reason why we like this sensor is because of the accuracy of knowing your tire pressure. So we're getting down to the tenth. Uh, if you've done any testing, you'll realize that what happens is pumps traditionally, uh, the pressure at the pump and the pressure at the wheel are slightly different. So this is definitely a good product for accuracy of information. Also, let me, let me just interrupt there yeah. because I think it's really important to point out, you know, why do we care about pressure at that accuracy level and the fact is is uh, when when you're pumping up your tire the tire is expanding in its diameter relative to the rim and in addition to that uh, your your um, interaction with the ground is changing because you're increasing your pressure so you're changing your aerodynamics because the width of the tire is changing and you're changing ro your rolling resistance at the same time we want to be able to tease out both and we are teasing out both and so this is why it is really important to to control our testing and ensure that you you maintain consistent tire pressure between tests and throughout tests uh, during say uh, a few hours of uh, test, testing different equipment I hope you've enjoyed this video. Definitely hit the like button, follow us. Uh, we're running a whole series of these videos that are intended to get, educate you, but as well as how to use our sensor, why we're doing certain things, and uh, overall. Also, if you have any recommendations for videos that you do want to see, put it down in the notes uh, and any comments, we appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Cheers. Every watt counts. Yeah, good point. Every watt does count. <laughs>